Good evening, everybody. My name is John Hub, and I talk about completing games on the internet. And you're watching another thrilling installment of Year of Like a Dragon, a year-long gaming challenge that hasn't claimed my sanity yet, but it surely will soon. The challenge is simple. I will be completing these games listed here all before the end of 2024. Yakuza Kiwami is a remake of the first ever Yakuza game that came out 11 years after the original. It came out directly after Yakuza 0, and for all intents and purposes, is essentially Yakuza 1 in the Yakuza 0 outfit, from the graphics to the gameplay to the presentation. I mean, look at these two side by side and tell me they don't at least know each other, you know what I'm saying? With Kiwami being a direct sequel to Zero though, there's no shortage of quality of life changes, balance tweaks, and overall improvements to the game as a whole that, in my opinion, make it a great game to play for newcomers of the series. But you'll hear all about that later on in the video. This video will not be a dive into the characters or story, but rather I'll be documenting my journey throughout 100% in the game and everything else notable about it really. As always, if you like this video and want to keep up with the challenge, feel free to drop a like and a subscribe if you'd like. And without further ado, let's dive right back into Year of Like a Dragon. Before I began my run of Yakuza Kiwami, I wanted to do a little bit of preparation and planning. Little things like peering at the completion list, achievements, and other objectives go a pretty long way in terms of letting me complete the Yakuza games in as efficient of a manner as possible. My game plan was simple. I'd start by beating the story, then do climax battles, followed by sub-stories, mini-games, and lastly I'd clean up any tasks and achievements I'd forgotten along the way. So I did just that, I started a new game on hard mode and got to work. For some reason I thought you needed to beat the game on hard to unlock legend difficulty, but it turns out that you can beat the game on any difficulty to play on legend. One of the biggest changes from Yakuza 0 to Yakuza Kiwami is that Kiryu is the only playable character. My condolences to you if you were a Zero fan like me who thought Majima would be playable in more games. Another big difference is upgrading abilities. In Yakuza 0, you would need exorbitant amounts of money to upgrade your character's abilities. In Kiwami, however, upgrades are obtained from XP earned in fights or through side content. One big upside to this is I was able to nearly max out most of Kiryu's abilities through story fights alone. So after loading up on healing items whenever I could, getting tons of upgrades throughout my run, and aggressively skipping cutscenes, I was able to beat Kiwami's story in a single day. Yakuza Kiwami is a pretty easy installment in the series, all things considered. Kiryu's moveset has been completely rebalanced, and now every style of his is pretty overpowered. The only points I really saw myself struggling in this story were the first Shimano fight at the end of Chapter 3, as it took like 5 years to beat him, the Shindo fight solely because I forgot to stock up on healing items and there's like a million dudes fighting you, and then this fight at the very end of the game with the two soldiers behind the guy. I have no idea why, but I just couldn't hit anyone in this fight, and they would not stop shooting my ass. But I persevered, and... I did that. Ah! Every Yakuza game has what's called Premium Adventure, which is just a fancy way of saying post-game. In Premium Adventure, you're able to complete sub-stories and other objectives that you may have missed while doing the story. Right as I began Premium Adventure, I decided to pay a visit to an old friend. <laughs> Guys, he may not be playable in this one, but he's in the game quite a lot, and some might say he's everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, Goro Majima, by the way. Every Yakuza game has what I would call its main side content. Can I get a hashtag main side content in chat, please? Thank you. Yakuza 0 had real estate and the cabaret club, and Kiwami has a system called Majima Everywhere. In the story, Kiryu goes to prison for 10 years. In this time, his fighting ability gets pretty rusty. This is an in-universe explanation as for why Kiryu isn't as strong as he was in Yakuza 0. All over the city, Majima will appear in random spots waiting to challenge Kiryu, with the goal of getting Kiryu back on his feet. Every time you beat Majima, your rank will increase slowly. Beating Majima in certain ways or achieving specific ranks will incrementally unlock new abilities for Kiryu's Dragon Style as well. Kiryu's Dragon Style is absolutely busted and is no doubt the best in the game when it's maxed out. Completing the amount of Majima fights required to unlock all the Dragon Style abilities is easy enough, but the hard part is having to find every unique Majima encounter for the completionist run. He can show up from above you, below you, behind you, she could be a bad bitch, there's really infinite possibilities. But how do you get the encounter that you want? Typically, every time Kiryu enters or exits a building, Majima's location will reset. He always ends up about a block and a half or two blocks away from the building you just exited, but with so many possible encounters, getting the same encounter multiple times is inevitable. There are also unique encounters for every time you're about to rank up, as well as Majima encounters where he challenges you to minigames. The minigames can honestly be pretty hard sometimes, but in terms of actually fighting him, he's not that hard to fight in the slightest. 
But when you're looking for that last Majima encounter to complete this godforsaken part of the run, and he's popped out of a manhole for the sixth time instead of coming out from under the comically large traffic cone that you need him to come out of, and there's no way to escape the fight without beating his ass, this mechanic does start to weigh on you. But guys, I did that. I really wish I loved anything as much as Majima loves fighting Kiryu though. This man looks like he's about to like climax or something when he battles you. Say that again? Climax battles, ultimate match, these challenges go by a couple of names, but they're always the same. A series of some of the toughest combat trials that the Yakuza games have to offer. Luckily this time, Kiwami's climax battles are pretty easy mostly due to Kiryu having access to what I would consider the best move in the entire game, the Tiger Drop. It's a parry that negates all damage and deals more damage than most heat actions. The timing isn't even that hard either if you're used to parrying in games already. Regardless though, here's a list of the 7 climax battles that I struggled with the most. Number 7, Mad Dog Battle 2. Defeat Majima in a police uniform without hitting the other two police officers next to him. This one was a little tricky, but through the use of more single target oriented moves in Kiryu's moveset, I was able to beat this one on my second or third try. Number 6, Ultimate Battle 5. This is the final climax battle, and it's actually the sixth most difficult in my opinion. It's a crazy long boss rush, but recovering 10% of your HP and Kiryu having access to his full strength moveset makes this one pretty trivial in the grand scheme of things. I was able to tiger drop and heat action my way to victory because this game has so many different situations in which you can execute a heat action. Basically, light work no reaction. Number 5, Melee Battle 9. You have a limited amount of time to go all the way downstairs in this building. You'd think because it's called Melee Battle 9 you'd be fighting a lot, but I found this to be impossible unless I hauled ass and only took out enemies that got in my way. I was able to get this one on my second try after realizing this. Number 4, Proving Grounds 1. This is actually the first climax battle that you have access to. You repeat a rather difficult combat section that takes place on a boat from the second to last chapter of the game. It was truthfully one of the more difficult combat sections from the story, and this time you can't get knocked down once. You can take damage, but the boat is full of enemies with weapons that will immediately not cure you down. This one took a few tries, but I found that treating this buzzsaw guy as my biggest priority, I was able to beat it pretty easily. Number 3, Proving Ground 7. You're given a golden pistol with infinite ammo and you have 1 HP, and you need to race all throughout the Tojo clan headquarters in a limited amount of time. The biggest challenge is that you're stuck in the beast fighting style, which boasts the worst dodge in the game and a slow movement speed that only ramps up when you move uninterrupted. I found myself needing to optimize my route and hide behind corners to avoid enemy fire, and beat this one after a few more tries than I'm willing to admit. Number 2, Melee Battle 8. You have 30 minutes to go through a lengthy combat section from the story, which ends with a boss fight with RSA. 30 minutes sounds like a lot of time, but it really isn't if you're not hauling ass. Not to mention the boss fight itself is pretty tricky as RSA is hard to hit. I found that tiger dropping certain attacks, including his bullets, was the best way of going about this one, and I was able to beat it on my second try. Number 1, Proving Ground 6. In this one, Kiryu must navigate rooftops and fight off enemies with guns and one with a sword, all with 1 HP. It took a little bit for me to get the timings down, but Kiryu can pretty easily dodge bullets in this game I found out. The real challenge is that there's a man with a katana with two men with guns behind him. I found that drawing out the katana wielder and fighting him one on one was the best strategy here, but you have very little space to fight in so getting hit by the katana was all too common. Sometimes I wouldn't bring the katana user out far enough as well, which resulted in me getting shot from a distance. Like the others, I was eventually able to conquer this one. I opted to do the climax battles right after the story for two reasons. One, it ensured that I'd get the hardest combat encounters in the game out of the way fairly early on in my run. And two, completing them rewarded me with the War God Talisman and the Calming Towel, among other items. The War God Talisman keeps Kiryu's heat at maximum at all times, making him more of a powerhouse than he already is. And the Calming Towel makes Kiryu unable to generate heat, which is a weird stipulation that's actually required to make Majima easier to find in the Majima Everywhere system. It also makes the Tiger Drop way more powerful. I truthfully forget the other items that you get from Climax Battles, but uh, yeah. Substories are some of the most entertaining parts of the Yakuza series. They're silly wacky requests and encounters that perfectly contrast the more serious, dramatic nature of the Yakuza game stories. From completing Yakuza 0 and for this game, I've learned that it's pretty crucial that I always speed through the substories though. 
All that to say, I kind of skipped through all the dialogue and have no basis on which to judge how good or bad the substories are in this game. Yakuza Kiwami has 78 substories to complete, and I started doing them immediately after I beat the story and climax battles. They're usually multi-step, meaning that you have to start them in one location, then run to another to either continue or finish them. So basically what I did is I would start on one corner of the map and run to the nearest substory indicator to me until eventually all the substories were done. The trouble finder item was a huge help as it told me exactly where all the substories were, and the only trouble I ran into in my run was a substory that would only activate once I drank enough at a bar, and it seemed to start at complete random after like my 70th drink. I'd call it more strange than difficult, but I digress. Yakuza Kiwami is also the first game to feature Haruka, a young girl who eventually becomes Kiryu's adoptive daughter throughout the series. After beating the game, you have the option to have her follow you around. Some substories in the game can only be accessed while she's with you, and I thought that was pretty cool. But you know what's not cool? Upon beating the game and going to Premium Adventure, you unlock a couple of things. You can finish any content you forgot to finish before, you can wear some unlockable outfits, but you also get access to a post-game exclusive feature, and that's fulfilling Haruka's requests. Like the Majima Everywhere system, you're able to increase your trust ranking based on how many requests you're able to fulfill. And here's the list of all of them right now. These would actually be totally optional if I decided to just 100% the in-game completion log for the game, but fully maxing out your request rank nets you an achievement, so I unfortunately had to do it. Otherwise, I'm not really 100%ing the game. Haruka's requests usually consist of going back and forth between going to a restaurant to accomplishing a feat in a minigame, and these get really hard. When I 100% Yakuza 0, I went out of my way to complete all the minigame challenges first just so I can get them out of the way. However, with Kiwami, I knew that this system existed, so I figured I'd do the minigame challenges once I got to the post-game. I'd like to take some time to go over the many, many minigames and challenges in this game in order from least to most difficult to complete. Before I get into ranking these minigames, I wanted to mention a big difference between Yakuza 0 and this game, and that's the addition of cheat items. Cheat items are one-time use items that almost always result in you getting perfect odds and outcomes in whatever game you're using them for. If they did factor into making the minigame challenges a lot easier, I'll be sure to mention them. Anyway, starting off with the easiest minigame. Koi Koi is a card game where you choose the prettiest card and usually win the game. Using the cheat item for this minigame, I was able to do this one easy peasy without ever learning a single rule of this game. CeeLo is a gambling game in which you roll dice to get good numbers. You could cruise by this without ever knowing the rules, but they're so simple that it's impossible not to understand the game in two seconds. There are four different cheat items for this game, so suffice it to say I was able to complete this one just as easily as Koi Koi. Completing this minigame consists of getting 10 best shots in the photo booth. You time a button prompt and more often than not you get the best shot. Roulette was an easy one as well. The cheat items make it so you're guaranteed to land on green, black, or red based on which cheat item you play. By taking all 50-50 bets with the cheat items, I was able to get this one. It was three coin tosses and done essentially. Baccarat is essentially a coin toss as well. You get cheat items that let the banker or the player win 100% of the time. The only reason I wouldn't put this on very easy is because I didn't get enough chips to fulfill the completion requirement right away, so it took a little bit of extra time. Chohan is the same thing as Baccarat, but with dice this time. You bet on if a number will be odd or even. You also get the ability to bet on which numbers will appear on the die, as well as the ability to go double or nothing on bets. This one took a little bit longer than Baccarat, but it's still pretty easy. Ochikabu is spicy blackjack, essentially. The two cheat items in this game give you 100% odds as the dealer or the player, respectively. It was over pretty quickly from what I remember, but it's definitely more complex than a coin toss, so I'm placing it here. Blackjack is... non-spicy blackjack, just don't go over 21. This took a little bit longer to grind than the others, but it was equally easy to complete. Poker is probably the hardest gambling game in Kiwami, as you need to earn a total of 20,000 chips in order to complete it. The CPUs in this game bet stupidly low on hands, and this was a bit of a time sink for me. The cheat items also only slightly help you with a single hand, which at best will net you a little more than 10% of the chips you need to beat this challenge. 
Cause I'm a creep. Darts has you throwing darts at a board. Kiryu has the shakiest hands known to man, but it's not too bad once you get used to it. Remember that one episode of Spongebob where Squidward lost all of his money gambling on a claw machine and had to sell his house? The UFO catcher is kinda like this. These fuckers just don't do the grabby. End of story. Get the fuck down from there! This next one is Mesu King, and hey, it's an arcade game. This looks pretty fun. And it's booby wrestling again. It's rock, paper, scissors with bug women. They took the booby women from the booby wrestling minigame from Yakuza 0 and they bugified them. You have to play this way too much in the game and you have to painstakingly find like 50 unique cards in town and throughout sub stories. It fucking bugs me to play this one. Pocket Circuit has you racing model cars against small children. By designing your car with the parts best suited for the track that you're racing on, you'll slowly become the Pocket Circuit world champion. There's a ton of pocket circuit races and this game features a lot of trial and error, so this one did take a minute for me. It's fun, but it can be pretty tough, especially on the later courses. The batting center has some pretty hard challenges. You need to get a really good score on each course, get 10 multi-hits on targets, which requires you to hold the analog stick in just the right spot for a prolonged period of time while also timing your swing. Not to mention Haruka asks you to come here twice for different challenges. Definitely one of the harder mini games than Kiwami. The bowling challenges in Yakuza Kiwami are the maddest I've gotten so far in this run. Specifically having to score 7 out of 10 or higher in split game courses for a singular pocket circuit part that sucks. So you have the regular bowling in this game and it's pretty easy. I think you have to bowl a turkey or something. But then you have the split game challenges from hell in this game. Like look at this shit bro. It took many many attempts to even get 7 out of 10 splits. And I thank my lucky stars I didn't have to do all 10. Pool almost made me quit this run outright. I lost hope for the very first time in this run. You need to hit three combination shots and three carom shots. Easy. It took some lining up, but I managed to do it. Right at the end of Haruka's long list of requests, though, she asked you to beat an expert CPU in the rotation game mode of pool. I kept track, and I was allowed to make a maximum of one mistake every time I attempted this. It didn't literally take the longest of any part in this game, but it sure felt like it. If anyone's offering Yakuza pool lessons, I'm more than happy to take them up on that. As you'll notice though, I actually forgot to mention a couple of mini-games. That's because I wanted to give them their own sections. Now, what do I think of Mahjong? The enemies to lovers trope is one that has been pervasive throughout film, literature, and games. Pride and Prejudice, 10 Things I Hate About You, uh, Clueless I think is one, uh, Beauty and the Beast is a classic that we all know, and the newest edition, John Hub and Richie Mahjong. I don't know what happened or how, but all of a sudden what I thought would be the bane of my existence and the killer of my 100% challenge as a whole became the minigame I love the most in this world. Is it just because we spent a lot of time together or is this just a coping mechanism and it's the only way my brain can justify playing this much Mahjong? I don't know. All I know is that I love you Mahjong and I'm sorry I ever thought otherwise. This was the game to start to love Mahjong too, because not only do you have to do the same Mahjong challenges from Yakuza 0, you also have to go from rank 30 to ranked 1 in the ranked Mahjong matches. The challenges are quite simple and we've seen them before already. Go out 10 times. This one's the simplest, you just win 10 hands. Go out with Mangan 5 times. Mahjong actually has a scoring system for all the hands that you win with. Going out with Mangan isn't that hard in all actuality, just make sure that your hand has a little something special. What did it for me was winning with 7 pairs, getting a full straight, or sometimes I just get it for no discernible reason. Go out with Hanaman one time. I would call this challenge hard because to beat it you need a really good high scoring hand. However, Kiwami has cheat items and Mahjong's cheat item is the best in the whole game. It gives you the absolute best hand which fulfills the requirements for this challenge, as well as one of your 5 Mangan hands that you need. Go out with Richi Ipatsu. When you're one tile away from a winning hand, you can declare Richi. After declaring Richi, the game will play on autopilot until the last tile you need to win shows up. Winning in one full rotation around the board or less nets you Richi Ipatsu. This one happens more commonly than you would expect, but it could take a second to get. Go out with full straight. Like with playing cards, Mahjong tiles have different suits, numbered 1 through 9. There's also dragons and wins, but we don't talk about those. If you get a winning hand with 1 through 9 of the same suit, that's a full straight. This one kind of took forever for me, but the key is that you need like 5 to 6 tiles of the same suit to start with in your hand already. Earn a total of 100,000 sticks in Mahjong. 
Sticks are the currency that you use to exchange for valuable items and yen at the mahjong counter. You can earn them by winning matches. Using the cheat item at the high stakes table got me there pretty easily. I did most of the challenges that I listed during ranked matches, which isn't something that's required for any of the in-game challenges or the achievements, but it is required if you're collecting every item, which I am. Ranked matches have you starting from rank 30 and moving up slowly from getting first and second place. This took a really long time, I don't even know how long. A saving grace for me was that I noticed you can quit out of a game if it's going really bad and retain your rank without losing the game. I spent at least 50% of my ranked matches trying to go from rank 2 to rank 1. I don't know if it was the pressure getting to me or if the AI was just really good, but I could not get first place in this one. But then, I did. Ah! Getting rank 3 in Mahjong gives you the Lotus Clan Broadsword, and rank 1 gives you the Dragon Driver. There's literally no other way to get these weapons in the game. Weapons in Yakuza games have less durability than gear in Breath of the Wild, so this was not really a worthwhile reward for nearly 10 hours of grind. But it did bring me one step closer to 100% in the game. So where would Mahjong go on my list of most difficult minigames? I'd say probably the absolute hardest, but I'd put an asterisk next to that. It is one of the most complicated minigames available in Yakuza Kiwami. A lot of minigames can be won without really knowing what you're doing, but Mahjong has a comparatively high skill floor and skill ceiling. It was also easily the longest to complete, but on the other hand, it's so easy to love that I don't mind. I'm kinda blinded by my newfound love for this game. I love you forever, Mahjong, and I can't wait to see you again, girl. Mwah. So anyway, now that she's gone, uh, what about that other minigame that I didn't mention? A hundred percenting a Yakuza game would be nothing without a hefty amount of mindless tedium, and Yakuza Kiwami has plenty. I didn't mention Shogi, and that's because depending on how you complete the challenges for it, it's either one of the easiest or the hardest minigames in Kiwami. I'd imagine Shogi is as complex as chess, and the CPUs are no joke. You need an insane amount of matches to get enough Shogi points for a singular weapon, the Dragon Slayer. What you can do though instead of a lot of matches is spam the same puzzle that has the same solution every single time for about 200 times or so. You could probably tell which method I went with. I definitely lost count, so I don't know if it's actually 200 times. After a long ass minigame grind though, I got through all of them, as well as all of Haruka's requests. Close to the end of my run, I grinded out the Colosseum, and holy shit what a long grind. Just like many other systems in the game, you have a Colosseum rank that increases by winning tournaments. Every tournament except for the last one gives absolute peanuts in terms of reward points. There are a bunch of weapons for the item list that are Colosseum exclusive, almost 2 million points worth to be exact. For reference, the very last Colosseum tournament gives anywhere from 50,000 to 60,000 points per clear. Every tournament is 3 battles, so I found myself going through uh, damn near 100 fights to get the points necessary to get everything. Not to mention that there's a completion metric for fighting every Colosseum opponent as well. Some of the Colosseum opponents are locked behind substories, and others are very rare to find in general. If the Tiger Drop and the War God Amulet didn't exist, this would have been hell, but it wasn't the worst, I guess. What was the worst, though, was cleaning up everything that I had left to do, essentially. You have to go to every single restaurant in the game and order every single food and drink on the menu for the 100%. There's a limit to how much alcohol Kiryu can drink, so you have to wait for minutes at a time to get sober enough to drink some more. A hellish experience, to say the least. All I had left after that, though, was performing every heat action in the game, and buying every piece of gear in the game. Yakuza Kiwami has a ton of heat actions. I almost couldn't believe it because there were so many heat actions that I never encountered in the game in the past or during my 50 hours of playtime at this point. There was a singular heat action that was near impossible for me for whatever reason, the Komaki Sword Reversal. While in Dragon Stance, when you're at critical health and fighting a katana enemy, hit the heat action button right when the enemy attacks. This wouldn't be too hard, but I patrolled down the streets for literal hours until my prayers were answered and I found a group of enemies with a lone katana user. I have no clue if anyone else had trouble with this specific heat action as I couldn't really find many things on reddit or game facts about it, but it put me through the ringer for sure. Obtaining every piece of gear in the game was another story. By this point, I had gotten every piece of gear tied to minigames or that show up in regular stores. 
There were a couple of secret weapon stores with really expensive gear, and also stuff tied to gambling games. It feels weird to say after just playing Yakuza 0, but I had money problems in this game to be honest. I had to sell everything I had after I bought it, participate in extra coliseum fights, and wear these socks that jingle and give you 100 yen for every step that you take, just to make ends meet. The very last thing I had to buy was a weapon from the gambling shop. You can exchange yen for the sticks that you need to buy the weapons, but you can only do it in small increments, which caused me to have to press the exchange button on the menu like 200 times. It made me feel like this game does not want people 100%ing it to be honest. But after that, I did it. And it was cake too. Um, a lot easier than Yakuza 0 for sure, a much easier game to 100%, uh, and a much more fun game to 100%. But why do I feel like I'm forgetting something? Oh yeah, to 100% the achievement list, you need to beat the game again on Legend Mode. Luckily, you're able to create a copy of your save data and use that to enter Legend Mode in New Game Plus with max upgrades. It's actually not a luxury that you have in every Yakuza game. At this point though, the only thing standing in between me and completing this game was Legend Difficulty. So, I locked in. After beating Legend difficulty, I officially completed Yakuza Kiwami with 62.4 hours of playtime. Holy shit, dude. Yakuza Kiwami was a lot of fun to complete, but would I recommend that you, the viewer, try to complete this game? No. Definitely give it a play though. The combat feels great, the story is iconic. I'd say that it's an essential game to play to experience the best this series has to offer. I want to take some time at the end of these videos to compare the games I've completed in this challenge to one another. Although Yakuza Kiwami took 20 less hours to complete, I actually found it a little bit harder in some spots to 100% than Yakuza 0, namely due to the pool and bowling challenges, and all the mahjong that you need to play just for one item. Maybe I'll put all the games in a tier list once I'm done with this challenge. Anyway, I will see you guys next time when I 100% Yakuza Kiwami 2.